Good morning, Midwest Believers Church. We're glad you're joining us this morning. Get on Facebook and uh, share this post so that people can join you, have a watch party. And as we go along, comment down in uh, the comments so that we can look back and know that you're here. But we are glad that you're joining us today. We're ready to worship the Lord. I hope you are too. You know, this is a great day. Today, every day is a great day to worship the Lord. And we want you to just enter in right there, wherever you are, in your home, in your car, wherever you're at right now watching. We want you to enter in and say, Lord, I open my heart to you today to receive encouragement, to receive a word from you today. Father, we worship you. So just lift your hands right now. Let's begin to magnify God and welcome his presence in this place. Father, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy, for your grace, Father. Lord, you're so good and we welcome you in this place. Holy Spirit, move and have your way minister to each and every person under the sound of my voice today, Father. Our heart's desires that each and every person be strengthened and encouraged because of your word, because of your presence today. Father, anoint every part of this service today. Lord, we open our hearts to be vessels that you can flow through today. In Jesus' name, Father, we thank you for your glory in this place. Hallelujah. Sing with us today. We've waited for this day. We're gathered in your name. We're calling out to you. Your glory like a fire, awakening desire, will burn our hearts with truth. You're the reason, you're the reason we're here. You are, you're the reason we're singing. Open up the heavens, we want to see you. Open up the floodgates, the mighty river flowing from your heart, filling every part of our praise. Your presence in this place, your presence in this place, your glory on our face, we're looking to the sky. Descending like a cloud, you're standing with us now. Lord, unveil our eyes. You're the reason, you're the reason we're here. Oh, and you're the reason we're singing. Open up the heavens, we want to see you. Open up the floodgates, the mighty river flowing from your heart, filling every part of our praise. Oh, sing, open up the heavens, open up the heavens, we want to see you open up the floodgates, the mighty river flowing from your heart, filling every part of our praise. Show us your glory, show us, show us your glory, show us, show us your power. Show us your glory, Lord. Show us your glory. Show us, show us your glory. Show us, show us your power. Show us, show us your glory, Lord. Open up, open up the heavens. We want to see you. The floodgates, the mighty river flowing from your heart, filling every part of our praise. Sing, open up the heavens, open up the heavens. We want to see you open up the floodgates, the mighty river flowing from your heart, filling every part of our praise. Sing, show us your glory. Show us, show us your glory, show us, show us your power, show us, show us your glory, Lord. Show us your glory, show us, show us. 
us your glory. Show us, show us your power. Show us, show us your glory, Lord. Open up, open up the heavens. We want to see you open up the floodgates. The mighty river flowing from your heart. Open up the heavens, open up the heavens. We want to see you open up the floodgates, the mighty river flowing from your heart, filling every part of our praise. Flowing from your heart, flowing from your heart, filling every part of our praise. worship you. Oh, we magnify you, Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward And you're weeping and rejoicing, he is with you, he is with you, he is for 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 you, he is
rejoicing. He is for you. 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 Your spirit, your spirit lives within 
so I, so I will walk in your peace. Your spirit lives within my victory. My victory. One more time. Your spirit lives within. So I, so I will walk in your Your spirit, your spirit lives within my victory. My Hallelujah. Oh, we sing hallelujah. I am not alone. Mm, he's my comfort. He's my comfort. Always. Oh, we sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, I am not alone. He is, he's my comfort, always holds me
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, we worship you. Oh, just let him minister to you right now. Glory to God, Father, we worship and honor the name that's above every name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we worship and honor your name. Glory to God. There's a scripture I wanted to read uh, to you. It's in Romans 15, verse 13, and it says this out of the New Living Translation. I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust him. Then you will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. Did you know that's our prayer for you today, that God, our source of hope, would fill you completely with joy and peace. I'm so glad that we don't have to face these times alone. Hallelujah. You know, I know we were hit with some more bad news uh, just this past week with uh, our state extending the stay-at-home order. But you know, I know there's all kinds of emotions and feelings that you have about this. Disappointment, I get it. I was disappointed too. And discouragement's going to try to come and you may have the thought, well, how can I do this for another month? How can I handle this? The good news is that God is our source of hope. And he will fill you completely with his joy, his peace, if you trust him. Hallelujah. You know, trust comes from spending time with somebody. The more you spend time with somebody, you begin to trust them because you get to know their ways. You get to know their nature. You know how they are. You know because you've been around them. If they said they would do something, they will do it. You trust them. And so I want to encourage you to spend more time with him. If you need peace, spend more time with him. Find out who he is to you what he's done for you, who you are in him, and let that fill your heart. And as you do that, his peace will flood your heart and mind. The Bible says he will keep you in perfect peace when your mind is stayed on him. And I found from my own life that when I lose my peace, and I'm not in peace, and I've got some turmoil and some um, just not settled on the inside, it's because I've been dwelling and meditating on the wrong things. And you know, that reminds me of the story of, of the children of Israel. And if, you, if you're on Facebook and you saw um, our children's pastor, Pastor Chad, he shared a little clip this week of, of encouragement talking about Joshua and Caleb and the spies. And there were 10 spies, that, 12 spies, they went to spy out the land and 10 of them came back with a negative report. Two of them came back with a good report. The 10 said, oh, we can't do this. It's bigger than us. We're not able. Well, two of them, they went and saw the land. They said, man, this land is great. It's flowing with milk and honey. And they said, listen to what they said. They said, we are well able. And you know what? We have a choice with all this stuff that's going on. We can say, okay, I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I can make it and dwell on the negative, or we can pull up our bootstraps, get into the Word of God, and see what His Word says. And His Word says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And so I make a choice today to say that I am well able to stand strong. I am well able to get through this to the other side. Hallelujah. You are well able. Because I found for every season that I've ever been in in my life, God gives grace. And he has graced you for such a time as this. He is not surprised by this at all. And you've heard us say this probably a hundred times now since all this started. He is not surprised by this. And when things like this happens, he will grace you. He will enable you. He will empower you to be able to stand and get through this to the other side. 
And so all you have to do is draw on that grace. And every single day when you wake up, say, Father, I thank you for grace for today. I thank you for his grace for today. Your mercies are new every morning. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. And Father, I draw on your grace today. You are my strength today. You are my hope today. You are my peace today. You are my joy today. And I'm choosing to walk in those things. Because I know what you've done for me. And God, I choose to trust you. And Father, I ask you to be my help today. And I found in times of my life when I've done that, he's always come through. Oh, he's always come through. So I want to encourage you today, if that's been you, you've been discouraged, disappointed with all this, and with that news, cry out to him today and ask him for his help. He's your very present help in time of need. Ask him for his grace for today, for this season, that he'll give you strength. And you know that strength comes as you get into his word. Open your Bible. Begin to read what his word says. Let that minister to you. And as you do, a strength will come to you. The Bible says in Isaiah, he gives power to the faint. To him who has no might, he increases strength. Hallelujah. So if you feel like that's you today and you're faint and you don't know if you can go any farther, if you don't, you don't know if you can make it anymore, yes, you can because he gives power to those who are faint. To him who has no might, he increases strength. So draw on his strength today. It's available to you right now. Just lift your hand right now, wherever you're watching, and say, Father, I receive your strength. I receive your grace. I receive your peace. I am well able to make it through this time. I'm coming out stronger. Hallelujah. I'm coming out blessed, increasing in every area of my life. Father, I thank you for it. I receive it right now. Holy Spirit, minister to each and every person that's crying out to you right now. Minister your strength and your help and your grace to them. Right now, in the name of Jesus, there's no distance. I may be here in the church building and you may be in your house, but God is ministering to you right now. The presence of God is there now to minister to you. Just receive him. Just receive it right now. Father, we thank you. We praise you for it. Hallelujah. God, you're so good. You're so good. We honor and magnify your name. We thank you. Come on, just begin to praise him right now. Father, we praise you. We magnify you. We glorify your name. We thank you for giving fresh spiritual strength right now to everybody watching this broadcast. Hallelujah. Father, we worship you. Oh, we worship you. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we worship you. Put a smile on your face right now and say, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Hallelujah. Father, we worship and honor you. We glorify your name, God. Hallelujah. Lord, you're so good. You're so good. Doesn't, can't you just sense a change in the atmosphere when you begin to praise and magnify God and cry out to him? He'll come and minister to you wherever you are. Aren't you thankful today? Hallelujah. Will somebody say praise the Lord? If you're by yourself, give yourself a high five. If you're sitting with a family member, do a little fist bump, give them a hug, tell them you're glad to worship the Lord with them today. And then you may be seated. Hallelujah. Well, we are glad to have you joining in with us on Facebook Live today. 
so thankful for technology that when we can't meet, we can go online and we can still have church and people are being ministered to. Hallelujah. God is so good. And so we thank you for joining us. As you know, we're having uh, services Sunday mornings at 1030, Wednesdays at 7. And we're thrilled to have you with us. If you, um, if this is the first time you are joining us that you've never been in one of our services, welcome. We are thrilled to have you with us. And we want to invite you to come and visit us in person as soon as we can meet again. Our church is full of awesome, loving people. They will welcome you and encourage you. And we want to meet you. We've seen so many different people on our Facebook page and um, we would love to meet you in person when all of this is over. And so uh, please know that you're welcome to come and we'll be sending out announcements and making Facebook announcements when we are able to meet again. Uh, just a few quick announcements I want to go over. I want to say a quick thank you to everybody who passed out cookies. Last week we gave out 300 Jimmy John's cookies. Last week, praise the Lord. We heard some great testimonies of how people were blessed and encouraged and ministered to with just a simple random act of kindness. And so thank you to everybody who participated in that. And then also our next outreach um, will be next week. And if you can see this on uh, the table here, this is a gift basket that we will be giving out to teachers. The last couple of years, um, our youth pastors, Will and Heather Engelman, they have put together an outreach to teachers to show appreciation. The first week of May is Teacher Appreciation Week. And uh, just because we've been in this quarantine stuff, uh, doesn't mean we want to forget our teachers. And so we appreciate what they are doing. And of course, they're not in school right now. Their whole world has been flipped upside down as well. And they're having to do some stuff online and teach in a different way. And they are missing their students. And we want to be a blessing to them. So we are going to do 20 gift baskets for some different teachers. And there's all kinds of school supplies, things that teachers would need. But we're also putting in there um, an Amazon gift card. Um, there's a gift card in here for uh, industrial donuts. There will be a Starbucks gift card uh, in there and all kinds of goodies. There's stamps and postcard, uh, little note cards so that they can send notes to their students. This will be a blessing to them. We'll have some information in there from our church, a nice little note uh, to let them know we will be praying for them. And so this is what our next outreach will be. Um, the cost of this basket with everything in it ends up being around $50. And I've had a few people ask if they could sponsor one. Yes, you can sponsor one. Um, all you have to do is send a check um, into the church, 1802 South Duncan, Champaign. You can give online and market outreach, or you can drop something off to the church. There's absolutely no pressure, but if you would like to give towards it, you don't have to purchase a whole basket for 50 You can just give 5 or $10 towards one if you would like. There's no pressure. We just are seizing the moment with this um, and taking the opportunity to be a blessing in our community. And we would have done this anyway, so we want to go ahead and continue to do it. It's always a blessing. We hear really good feedback from these, just simple ways to show the love of God. And so thank you to all those uh, helping with that. And if you have any questions, you can call the church office this week and we will let you or we can answer those for you. Don't forget about Monday night prayer. We're still praying on Monday nights from seven to eight, just doing it from home. So if you have a prayer request, you can email it to us or comment on Facebook. And then also we're doing Testimony Tuesdays at noon live on Facebook. So if you have something that you're excited about that God has done in your life, Please send us the testimony. We are sharing them, and people are being so encouraged. We're hearing from people that don't even go to our church that love watching Testimony Tuesday. And so it's being a blessing and encouragement to those uh, that are watching it, and I cannot wait for this Tuesday. I have some great testimonies to share. We're already getting them in. So please send them in to us. We want to share them with you and boost your faith. And then also, Believer's Kids will be... Uh, on Facebook at noon today. The youth are meeting by Zoom on Wednesday nights at 7. And so we're trying to keep everybody connected, trying to have something for everybody. And so please participate in those. You have to be intentional to stay connected during this time. We're doing our best to send mail outs, 
emails, do Facebook posts and that kind of thing to keep you connected. And so we want you to stay connected during this time. And please, um, you know, send us a message. Drop us a note if you're being ministered to by the services. We want to hear from you. And so it's really different for us because here we're sitting here. I'm talking to a camera. There's just a few of us in here and uh, mainly empty seats. And so um, we want to hear feedback from you. And so we cannot wait until we can all get together again. God's been so good to us. He's blessed us during this time. And, um, you know, I'm so thankful, like I was ministering before, for the grace of God, because he is our helper in helping us through this time. And so we love you all and hope you're ready for the word today. And uh, grab your Bible, your notepad, and uh, you'll be blessed. Praise God. Hallelujah. Brother, turn me on. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, God is good. He is so faithful. And, you know, we can't ever uh, overstate that of his goodness and his faithfulness. He said his arm's not short. His strength is not small. But he is the God that absolutely loves you. Isn't it amazing to think about the God who created the heavens and the earth? loves me and loves you. He knows and he cares about how many numbers of hair are on your head. You don't care. I don't care. I know I wish I had more, but, um, but I don't care exactly how many numbers of hair or uh, what the number is of hairs on my head. But you know what? He does. And if he cares about that little small thing, then he cares about the other areas that are uh, more important in your life. And so don't ever think that God is not thinking about you or that God doesn't love you or that God doesn't care about you. He loves you, and he's always faithful, and he's always good. Amen. Well, we're so glad to be with you this morning. I believe uh, this message and this series of messages will are being a blessing to you. And, uh, you know, we started several weeks ago on a, a series called Why Not?, and I didn't know how long it would be. We may be on this thing through the end of the year. We'll see. But why not? And people have been writing down in the why not notebooks of things that they're believing God for. And we said, why not believe God for the big? Why not make our expectation big? He's a big God. We believe he's a big God. If, you know, in a thousand churches across the U.S., if you would just randomly pick churches and say, how many of you believe that God is a big God? Eh, almost every person would raise their hands and say, yes, I believe God is a big God. And so since he's a big God, and since uh, we believe what the word of God says about him, about his strength not being small, and uh, the earth, the heavens are his throne, and the earth is his footstool, and so uh, since we believe that, why not believe big from him? Amen. Because he is a big, faithful God. He is a big, faithful God. And so we can trust him all the time. And so we begin to talk about why not. And we begin to talk about why not think like God thinks. Why not think like God thinks. Uh, another thing we said, why not walk in protection. And we spent a little bit of time on, on the protection of the Lord. Why not walk in his protection. And you know that's very, that's very good to hear and to know about. Uh, whenever uh, we're going through seasons like this right now. When the news is not necessarily good news. And uh, so why not walk in his protection? We need to be reminded of that. Uh, why not be fearless? Why not be fearless? Why not read the word? Why not hear the word? Why not declare the word? Why not walk in peace? And uh, last week we ended up with why not walk in love? Amen. You almost have to pull your, you almost have to pull your uh, toes back. If they, if they get bloodied, you just have to put them, put them back a little bit. Amen, because uh, we start talking about why not walk in love, uh, why not walk in love, why not forgive, uh, why not, and you know, it really hits us, but on the other side of forgiveness, on the other side of walking in love is the blessing of the Lord, amen. Many times we, we uh, wonder why isn't God responding to us, why isn't the Lord answering our prayers, or why not this, why not that? And we need to uh, look at our love walk. One minister said, the first thing that I go back to is my love walk. 
I go back and check my love walk. Am I walking in love? Am I walking in forgiveness? Am I walking uh, uh, in that area of, of my life? Am I showing the love of God? And so we're talking about that, and we're talking about that this morning. And um, I just want to read a scripture here, uh, Galatians chapter 6. If you will turn with me there, we're going to look at verses 8 and 9. And then the King James Version says this, <coughs> For he that soweth to his flesh shall reap uh, corruption, but he that soweth to the Spirit uh, shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we will reap if we faint not. He said, don't let us be weary in well-doing. You know what, right now is not the time to get weary in well-doing. Right now is not the time to give up. Right now is the time to continue on. Amen. There's something about persistence. There's something about just keeping on, keep on, keeping on. Amen. There's something about that that causes you to walk at a higher level in your relationship with God. And so he said, let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. You know, I think about another scripture that says, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will men give unto your bosom. Well, you know, uh, there's something about this whenever we sow to the flesh and we sow to just what, our, what feels good to the flesh, we'll reap that back. You know, sometimes we sow to the flesh and we... Think about people walking down the, or uh, about people driving down the road and they may cut you off and you want to sow some things of the flesh. You want to wave a special way to show them how much you really care about them. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm just kind of teasing there. But anyway, uh, you, uh, but when we sow to the flesh, we'll reap of the flesh. You know, it's just, like, it's just like these farmers, you know, just across the street from us is, is a farm and, and, you know, it may be beans one year and corn the next year or whatever, whatever they plant. But, you know, if they plant beans, they, go to, they don't go out and get disappointed because they didn't have any corn crop. And they don't go uptown and go into the diner or whatever and they're complaining with the other farmers and they're saying, man, it's terrible terrible. I didn't get any corn this year. I didn't get any corn. I sowed, but I didn't get any corn this year. And the other farmer may look at them and say, well, what did you sow? Well, I sowed beans. I sowed beans, man, soybeans. I sowed all kinds of soybeans, but I didn't get any corn. And that's what people uh, do with their love walk. They're okay to sow the negative and to sow uh, uh, grouching, gr griping and complaining and all that, but they don't want to reap. No, none of us want to reap that. Amen. None of us want to reap an attitude. None of us want to reap somebody speaking down to us. And so we got to make sure that we're sowing the right thing because that's a principle. Whatever we sow is what we're going to reap. Amen. I believe we can look at now and see where we are now and look back and see where we have sown. Because if we haven't sown there, we won't reap there. Praise God. Uh, so I want to talk about this, two types of love. And uh, this morning I want to talk about why not so love. So agape love. This is the God kind of love. It is only given to us by God. Only given to us by God. And it is unconditional. That is the God kind of love. Now there's another kind of love. People's love <coughs> says this. I'll forgive you if you apologize to me. <laughs> if you scratch my back, I'm going to scratch your back. Uh, if you'll apologize to me, if you'll come and grovel at my feet, if you'll beg forgiveness, oh, please forgive me. I was so wrong. I was so wrong. Well, you know what? That expectation is not the God kind of love. The God kind of love forgives even if they don't know about it. Amen. The God kind of love forgives even when their back's still turned. Jesus, or the Bible says that Jesus died for us, Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. He died for us. Thank God that he did. Thank God that he showed that mercy. 
Amen. Thank God that his love is unconditional. <coughs> is unconditional. So never get weary of sowing <coughs> agape love. Never get weary of sowing the God kind of love. Sow the seeds of, the, of love to the Spirit and we'll reap back from uh, the Spirit love. We'll reap back love. If you're not getting a bunch of love, then you might want to look back and see because that principle works whether you believe it or not. Amen. That principle works. Man, I could get up on top of this roof and I could get up there and I could look down and say, I don't believe in, what is that? Uh, gravity. I don't believe in gravity. I think that's a bunch of nonsense. I don't believe. And I could jump off the roof. And you know what? It doesn't matter whether I believe in it or not. I'm going down in the principle of gravity. That law is going to be enacted. Amen. And the same way with sowing and reaping. We're going to reap back what we've sown, whether we believe in that principle or not, it still works. And so we can look back at our lives and see what we've sown, and you can see the harvest of it in our lives. And so, sowing love. Sowing love. Love without expectation. Uh, love without expectation from that individual. Amen. Oh, people's love says, I'll forgive you if, you if you repent, if you come back to me. Well, thank God God wasn't that way. He forgave us while we were yet sinners. While we're still in the middle of the mess, he forgave us. And he loved us so much that he brought us out. Amen. We've been made new by the blood of Jesus. And it wasn't because we deserved it. It wasn't because we did everything right. It was because he has loved us. And he has shown us that unfor or, or unconditional forgiveness, unconditional love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever would believe on him would not perish but have everlasting life. He showed us his love. Hallelujah. And so we don't want to be offended. We don't want to stay offended. We don't want to stay in unforgiveness. We want to sow forgiveness. Amen. The longer we stay in unforgiveness, uh, the longer that we stay offended, it builds up walls in our heart. Uh, you know what that is? That's protection from being hurt again. But it keeps the love of God out. And it keeps uh, uh, love from reaching our hearts because we built up a wall to protect. But thank God for his goodness. Thank God for his grace. Uh, Proverbs chapter 18, verse 19 talks about offense. An offended friend is harder to win back than a fortified city. Arguments separate friends like the gate locked, like a gate locked with bars. Arguments separate friends. You know, there's just no place for it. Arguments, strife, that only separates and drives apart. Never brings back together. Uh, it separates friends. Friends, I mean, someone that was once close to you may not be close to you because of an argument, because of strife. And so, you know what? We need to forgive. Let's get those walls out of the way. Let's tear those walls down. Amen. We talked about forgiveness, and we, we likened it to a trap that gets on your, uh, that may, you know, clamp onto your leg or whatever. And that trap, we need to get rid of that trap. And let's continue to walk in love. Amen. Uh, five things that will happen because we hold on to offense. Uh, offense, betrayal, hatred, deception, and love grows cold. And you know, as, as believers, as Christians, God's been so good to us. And we've talked about that, how good he's been to us. How merciful, how forgiving he's been to us. And as Christians, as believers, we should show that forgiveness to others. Amen. And I'm going to say this. This might be kind of strong. But as believers, now I'm not just not, you know, if someone's not a believer, if someone's not accepted the love of Christ, that's a different situation. But as believers, we really don't have a right to be offended. 
we don't have a right to be offended. I know that's strong, uh, but you know, if we just play with it, we'll never reap the benefits of overcoming offense. If we just toy with it, and if we just pat it on the back and go, oh, well, well, you know, I don't, I still, I still am going to hold on to this offense. If I just pet it, then I'm never going to get over it. But you know what? If I'll get strong with it and say, you know what? As believers, we don't have a right to be offended. We don't have to, a right to carry around offense. We don't have a right. We have a right to love because he's loved us. Amen. We have been made righteous. We have been made right with God because of his forgiveness. Now we have a right to show that forgiveness. Yeah. Hallelujah. In expectation. Uh, John chapter 16, verse 1. In the Amplified, it says, I have told you all these things so that you should not be offended. Turn to somebody that you're sitting next to and just, I don't know if you point to them, but uh, tell them you should not be offended. Amen. You should not be offended. You should not be offended. No, no, you should not be offended. Now point to yourself and say, I should not be offended. The word of God tells me I shouldn't be offended. I shouldn't be offended. And uh, he gives me grace and he gives me strength to be able to walk free from offense. And we are walking free uh, from every trap of the enemy. Listen to how this describes offense. Uh, the Amplified Version of John chapter 16, verse 1. Taken unawares and faltering, and to be caused to stumble and fall away. I told you to keep from being scandalized and repelled. You know what mercy does? Mercy covers the multitude of sins. We're getting ready to talk about mercy. Mercy. Uh, why not? Why not sow the love of God? Uh, in Luke chapter 17, verse 1, Jesus tells us that it is impossible to live our lives without being offended. And so how we respond to offense, offense is going to come. Offense is going to come. Let me just say it this way. The opportunity to be offended is going to come. How we respond to that opportunity makes all the difference in the world. Amen. Amen. So we're responding in love. We're responding, and the Lord said we shouldn't be offended. Don't be offended. Don't be offended. Because he knows that, that the fruit of offense is separation. Even from those that are closest to you, the fruit uh, from offense is to separate. And that's what the enemy wants to do. He wants to separate uh, you from those that are closest to you. So why not sow love? Why not show mercy? Matthew chapter 5, it says this, Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. You see that principle of sowing and reaping right here. Blessed are the merciful, uh, for they will be shown mercy. The New Living Translation says this, God blesses those who are merciful, for they will be shown mercy. The Weymouth Translation says, Blessed are the compassionate, for they shall receive compassion. The Young's Literal Translation says, Happy are the kind, because they shall find kindness. Amen. So if I'm looking at my harvest, and I don't like my harvest, and people are mad at me, and people have an attitude with me all the time, then I have to look at the seeds that I have sown. Amen. And so we must be careful how we respond to offense, and we have to respond with mercy. We have to respond with mercy. Now we're going to talk uh, for a couple minutes about a story about Noah and his sons. And let's look at, let's look at uh, what mercy does. And we've already said that mercy covers. And uh, there's, there's definite blessings to showing mercy. And, uh, and there's definite results for not showing mercy. So Genesis chapter 9, verse 20. Noah, a man of the soil, or a man, a farmer, proceeded to plant the vineyard, and when he drank some of its wine, he became drunk and lay uncovered inside of his tent. Verse 22, and Ham, the father of Canaan, saw his father naked and told his two brothers outside. But Shem and Japheth took a garment, laid it across their shoulders, and they walked backward and covered their father's naked body. Their faces were turned the other way so that they would not see their father 
naked. Ham saw his father naked and told his brothers. I want to point that out because it's important how we respond. Showing mercy is not always, uh, showing mercy doesn't happen until somebody wrongs you. And the way of the world is to go and to tell everybody else how this person wronged me. But mercy covers it. Mercy doesn't display it. Mercy doesn't talk about it. And so Ham saw his father, number one, he saw his father that way. And number two, he told his brothers. He shared it. And Shem and Japheth covered their, body, their father's body and wouldn't even look on him. Let's look at the results of their actions. So verse 24 and 25, And when Noah awoke from his wine and found out what his youngest son had done to him, he said, Cursed be Canaan, the lowest of slaves will he be to his brothers. So the, uh, the result of showing and displaying the wrong is a curse. And not a blessing. But look at this, Shem and Japheth. And he also said, Praise be to the Lord God of Shem. And <clears throat> uh, may Canaan be a slave, the slave of Shem. May God extend Japheth's territory. May Japheth live in tents of Shem, in the tents of Shem. And may Canaan be the slave of Japheth. There are blessings for showing mercy and covering the offense. Amen. We don't need to go out and talk and share with everybody the offense of how somebody has wronged us. We need to pray for them and cover it up and don't talk about it. Amen. We're not supposed to talk about one another. We're supposed to show the love of God. Amen. Amen. So this passage shows us what God thinks about expo exposing the flaws of others. You know, as we get closer to people, we see their flaws. We see their flaws. You know, as, as married people get closer, and Ron and I have been married for almost 20, is it 24 years? Coming up on 24 years. And um, on June the 8th. And, you know, I guarantee you that she sees my flaws. There's not very many, but she sees them. I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. Uh, but anyway, she sees my flaws. And when we first got together, maybe she didn't see those. But as we grow closer, we begin to see the flaws of others. Amen. And as we see the flaws of others, you know what we need to do? We need to go right to our knees and pray for them. Amen. We don't need to just expose them to everybody. Uh, we need to show the mercy of God. Amen. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 12 says this. Uh, in the NIV, hatred stirs up conflict. But love covers over all wrongs. The English Standard Version says, Hatred stirs up strife, but love covers. Amen. Hatred stirs up conflict and strife. <clears throat> so if the fruit of it is conflict and strife, it is not the love of God. Amen. We need to show the love of God to one another. Amen. We expect God to show us his love. Let's show that love to others. Amen. Hatred stirs up dissensions, contentions, strife, quarrels, sins, transgressions, and wrongs. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 8 says this. Above all, love each other deeply. Love each other deeply. Because love covers a multitude of sins. We're talking about mercy. Why not show mercy? Why not show mercy? We, we appreciate it when mercy has shown us. Why not show mercy to others? Instead of exposing all their flaws, cover it over and pray for them and show the love of God. Amen. Love covers the multitude of sins. Why not forgive? We're talking about why not sow love? Why not show mercy? And why not go ahead and forgive? Oh, just let it go. Just go ahead and forgive. Um, one thing I wrote down here, don't harp one another on one another about an issue. What is that? 
harping on one another about an issue. Man, we need to let that stuff go. Amen. We need to forgive. We need to show the love of God and don't harp on one another about an issue. Amen. That's not forgiving. That's not forgiving. Hallelujah. That's stirring up strife. Stirring up strife. Stirring it up just like a, just like a butter churn, you know, an old butter churn. You'd sit there and you'd stir that milk up until it thickened and, and hardened and became, became butter. Oh, my goodness. And you keep churning. It's kind of like the... Uh, Kind of like you're stirring it up whenever you start to stir up paint and things, and you start stirring that up. You know, paint that sits for a while, all the all the the you know the thick stuff goes to the bottom, and a lot of times you just have a layer of clear, and all the thick stuff. And you know what happens when we begin to get into strife and we begin to harp, harp on an issue? We begin to stir that stuff up. We begin to stir that stuff up, and it may not be good stuff. But it stirs up and it causes strife, causes uh, problems between people, and really causes division. But we're talking about why not forgive. Uh, Proverbs chapter 17, verse 9. Love prospers when a fault is forgiven, but dwelling on it separates the closest friends. The Holman's translation says this, Whoever conceals an offense promotes love, but whoever gossips about it separates friends. God's word said, translation says, whoever forgives an offense seeks love, but whoever keeps bringing up an issue, repeating separates the closest of friends. Amen. The Amplified says, he who covers and forgives an offense seeks love, but he who repeats and harps on a matter separates even the closest of friends. You know, um, bringing up the issue, repeating the issue, or harping on the matter will separate, will bring separation. Luke chapter 17, verse 1, talking about offense being inevitable. Satan wants to separate you from the body of Christ through offense. By getting people offended, he stops the flow of knowing God in Christians' lives, of knowing the God in Christians' lives. He will stop the flow of knowledge of Him, of knowledge of His love, of knowledge of His grace by unforgiveness in my heart. I can stop the flow of His goodness in my life by unforgiveness. So you know what I need to do? I need to just go ahead and forgive. Amen. Just go ahead and forgive. Oh my goodness. Go ahead and forgive because I don't want anything between him and me. Amen. I don't want there to be any wall up keeping me from the blessing of God. Because what is it if I pray constantly for the blessing of God, yet I will not forgive and I keep the wall between God and me and that wall is up and blocking and God's trying to get the blessing to me, but unforgiveness is a blessing blocker. Unforgiveness will block the blessing and keep the blessing from flowing in your and my life. Amen. Amen. Uh, and Satan, he doesn't like you. You know, that's a revelation to some. Satan does not like you. Satan does not like you. He doesn't like your people. He doesn't like your family. He doesn't like your church. He does not like you. And the Bible says that the thief comes to steal kill, and destroy. But I am come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. So the enemy is trying to steal, kill, and destroy. And so that unforgiveness is only the enemy trying to steal from you, trying to kill your relationships, trying to destroy your marriage, trying to destroy your home. And so as Christians, as believers, we uh, have to be those type of people that say no. We will not let you destroy us. We will not let you destroy our marriage. We will not let you destroy our home. Amen. Colossians chapter 2, verse 2 says this. My goal is that they may be encouraged and united in love. Somebody say united in love. United in love. So that they may have full riches of complete understanding in order that they may know the mystery of God 
in Christ Jesus. We will know him as we walk in love. And we have to stay united in love. Like Rhonda was just talking about, we want to we wanna keep connected. We're doing, we're doing everything we know to do to keep connected. We've got we to gotta keep connected and united as a family, as a church family. And we can do more as a church family. We can reach out more as a church family. But it is so important. Don't you, can't you feel, I can, I can tell the difference like this morning. I can tell the difference and there's a few of us here and thank God for the few of us here. But it's just not the same without you here. And we need one another. Can you tell the difference of not being in church and not being around your, uh, your uh, Christian brothers and sisters, not being around people of God? Isn't it different? We need one another. Yeah. You know, I uh, had somebody tell us um, early on when we, we did an outreach and we drove to some people's houses and <coughs> different things like that. And a friend of ours said, I, for, I didn't realize how much I missed my church family. And that was probably a month ago. How much I missed my church family. Well, you know what? We miss you. We miss you. And your church family misses you. And so it's so important for us to stay connected and to stay united. That's why the Testimony Tuesday is so important. It's so important to share those testimonies and what God's doing in your life and how the Lord is providing in your life. It is so important. And to stay connected on, on Facebook, it seems like the platform where everybody is. And so to stay connected there, it is so important. And the enemy wants to come in and drive a wedge. And if he can drive a wedge by strife, by unforgiveness, he'll drive a wedge and to separate. His goal is division. His goal is separation. But our Father's goal is for us to be unified and stay close together. And so we've talked about why not so love? Why not show mercy? Why not forgive? Yeah, the last thing I want to take a few minutes to talk about is why not live in unity? Why not live in unity? Unity releases the understanding of God. When we're just off doing our own thing, we don't know him. And if we're not walking in unity with our spouses, with our, with our kids, with our families, with our church family, then we don't really know him. He's a God of unity, not a God of separation. Amen. <clears throat> uh, Jesus prayed for his saints in John chapter 17, verse 20. My prayer is not for them alone. I also pray for those who will believe in me uh, through their message. I thank God that I heard the gospel and I'm one of them. He's talking about me right there. He's talking about you right now, right there. You believed the gospel message. Uh, verse 21, that all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you sent me. I have given them uh, the glory that you gave me that they may be one as we are one. He said it twice there in uh, two scriptures, three scriptures, that we would be one. Verse 23, I in them and you in me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. Thank God that he loves us. Amen. And he wants us to be in unity. Psalm chapter 133. Verse 1, out of the Amplified, says, Behold how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment poured on the head that ran down the beard, even the beard of Aaron. Uh, that came down upon the collar and skirts of his garments, uh, his whole body. It is like the dew of Mount Haran, the dew that comes from the hills of Zion. For there... Uh, the Lord has commanded the blessing, even life forever, forevermore, upon the high and upon the lowly. There's blessing 
and life for us as we walk in unity. Amen. There's blessing and life for you as we walk together in unity. I want to encourage you, as we did last week, I want to encourage you to forgive. I want to encourage you to not hang on uh, to the division that the enemy would try to bring, to not hang on to that, but to let go of bitterness and unforgiveness. Amen. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 2 says this, Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. Make every effort. The NIV says, make every effort. Make every effort to keep peace, to keep unity. Make every effort. You know, we're stronger together. We are nothing divided, but we're stronger together. You know, your family is stronger together. Your home is stronger together. The Bible says, a house divided against itself shall not stand. A house divided against itself. Well, we're stronger together in unity. And there's no place uh, for disunity in the body of Christ. There's no place for unforgiveness in the body of Christ. Well, this person, they said this to me. They wronged me. We've all been wronged. And can I just say this? We've all wronged at one time or another. We've all wronged someone else. But thank God for his mercy. Thank God for his forgiveness. Thank God that he didn't do us the way probably in the past we've done other people. Unforgiveness isn't worth it. Matthew chapter 18 says this, uh, verse 19 and 20. And again, truly I tell you that if two of you agree on earth as touching anything, it will be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. The NIV says this, again, truly I tell you that if two of you agree about anything they ask for, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three gather in my name, and you know, like Rhonda said, you might be there in your living room. You might be there wherever you are. There's two or three of us here. But he said, when we gather together, and you know what? We may not, I may not be able to reach out and touch you right now, but we are gathered together. And where two or three are gathered in his name, he is there in the midst of us. Our prayers are strong when we walk in unity. Our prayers are hindered when we don't walk in unity. So I have three things here, how to overcome offense. This is so good. This is so good. Number one, pray blessings over the offender. You say, Pastor Trent, how do I get rid of offense? Write these down. These are important. Pray blessings over the offender. Number two, every time you think of them, declare that you forgive them. <laughs> every time you think of them. Because you know if you forgive them today, that probably an hour later you're going to think, man, they wronged me. I don't know. Every time you think about that person, you say, say it out of your mouth. Say, I forgive them. I forgave them. I forgave them, that's over, I'm putting that behind me, I'm just letting that go. Amen. Come on now. Number three, don't let your thoughts take you back to the offense. In other words, our thoughts will go back to the offense, will go back to the wrong, and we have to not allow that. And so one easy way to do that is to begin, just say, I forgave them. I refuse to go back there. I forgave them. It's over and done with. I forgave them. Amen. You may have to say that over and over. I forgave them. I forgave them. But just remember this. Uh, a lady by the name of Stormy Omarshan said this. Forgiveness doesn't make the other person right. It makes you free. <laughs> oh, that is so good. Forgiveness doesn't make them right. But it makes you free. One minister said, you can be right and rude and be wrong. 
You know, how we, how we look at these things, how we respond to the offense is so important. But I'll tell you, now is not a time to be stuck and to be held back and weighed down by offense. Now is the time to be free. Now is the time to be free. I want to encourage you again today. Maybe last week you listened and you're like, well, that forgiveness is probably a good idea. But today's your day to let go. Today's your day to go ahead and do it. Go ahead and forgive. And so if there's something in your heart, I don't know what's in your heart. But you know. You know. And if there's something that's holding you down, holding you back, I want to encourage you today. Let's let that go. Oh, we're going to let it go. We're going to let it go. Get ready. You're getting ready to be free. You're getting ready for the chain and the bondage that's held you back. You're getting ready to be free. And you can walk away from this prayer with a smile on your face and the weight off of your shoulder because you have decided to forgive. You know, on the other side of forgiveness is blessing. On the other side of forgiveness and walking in love is increase. The blessing of the Lord. Not, not the blessing of God. Hey, bless you. Or not, not, not the blessing of man. Hey, bless you. Bless you. Bless you. You know, when people come into the church, they say, well, God bless you. God bless you. You know, I end the conversation on the phone. I always say, God bless you. God bless you. Whether it... Anyway. Uh, but I'm talking about the blessing of God. The blessing of God on the other side of forgiveness. Oh, get ready to receive the blessing of God into your life. Get ready to receive the mercy of God, the favor of God into your life. Today is the day. Today is Freedom Day. Amen. You don't have to wait till July 4th. You can receive the freedom of God right now. And you can celebrate freedom in Him today. And so pray this prayer for me. Say, say Heavenly Father, thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for loving me so much and showing me how godly love really works. And I make a decision today to forgive. I forgive those that have wronged me right now. I let it go. I set them free. And I thank you, Father, that in doing so, I set myself free. And I receive your mercy. I receive your love. I receive your grace for my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Doesn't it feel good just to let that stuff go? Just to let that stuff go. You know, if you prayed that prayer, if you meant that, if you, if you forgave, man, I'm telling you something, you are free. From the chains that were holding you, you are free. Amen. You might skip around a little bit today. Hallelujah. With a smile on your face. Amen. Amen. Now, if there's anyone here this morning uh, that you need to make things right with the Lord Jesus, Today is your day. If you want to uh, rededicate your life to the Lord, maybe you need to do that. If you want to give your heart to the Lord, receive His love and His forgiveness for you, today is your day. And I want you to pray this prayer after me. Say, Heavenly Father, thank you for loving me. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for me that Jesus went to hell for me. I believe that he rose again. Thank you, Jesus, for paying the price for my sin. I ask you to come into my heart right now in Jesus' name. If you prayed that prayer, we believe that you've been born again. We believe 
that uh, you're in for it, in for the blessing of God, in, in, in for learning about Him, growing in your relationship with God. It's a good day. It's a great day. Amen. We just want to uh, let you know that we love you. We love you all. We're praying for you each and every day. Amen. Make sure and send us, send us prayer requests as we go to prayer tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. We have a whole team that gathers and, and prays we're, we, uh, by technology. We're praying together at the same time. So send us your prayer requests. Send us your testimonies for Testimony Tuesday. Amen. Be praying for these teachers as we get ready to reach out to them and show the love of God to them next week. Amen. God is so good and so faithful. We want to encourage you, stay together. If you know somebody, somebody in church and you have their tag or you have their phone number, shoot them a text that you're thinking about them and you're praying for them. Shoot them a text. Tell them how much you love them and how much you appreciate them. You know, we all need to hear that from time to time. And so let's stay together. Let's stay hooked up as, as a local body, as a church body. Let's stay connected. And, uh, you know, get involved when we do outreaches. Get involved. We love you. We're praying for you all the time. And we believe that your best days are not behind you. Your best days are in front of you. Your best days are yet to come. And so be encouraged, be strengthened, and praise God. Walk in forgiveness today. Amen. Amen. God is good. We love you.